Hey, bueno nachos, uh, redneckers. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Today we are experimenting. I am not very confident or optimistic, but this is what we're going to do. I got a evaporator leak in the dash, and a 2011 Dodge Charger was verified from the AC shop. They smelled it with their high dollar sniffer. So what we're going to do today is try to get as much of the stop leak or at least one ounce of it directly into the evaporator without going through the rest of the system where it really doesn't have to go. It'll eventually circulate, but I want to get concentrate all the way into the evaporator. So what we got this stuff is supposed to be the top of the line, won't clog, Red Angel by Blue Devil. AC stop leak on sale today at 27 and change at the O'Reilly Auto Parts. What we're gonna do is we are going to fill up this yellow hose with all the way up with the stop leak and we're going to change out the ends from the red hose wherever it went there it is and the red hose is going to go in directly so i want to charge it into the small line the port is right there on the dodge charger and that will shoot it in the direction of the evaporator and then it will go through the expansion valve through the evaporator back to the suction line the large line back to the compressor back to the ac condenser and filter dryer which is on the side of it and make the circle so hopefully this will work so you can also use an injection uh, cylinder thing where you fill it up and push it through but I'm not going to use probably the two ounces. This will take about one ounce. So let me hook her up. So as you can see, it's a slow process. I made a little funnel out of a gear oil squirter top. And I had extra. I'm going to fill this hose up until it comes up to the surface on the other side uh, equally. And we will have all the air out of it. All right, after some juggling, I don't know if you can see that, but she's full. I got all the air bubbles out by making one end lower than the other and then back and forth until all the air is purged and don't lose too much fluid. And now we're gonna hook her up. And it turns out yellow is different than red fittings. Yellow is larger. So for me to put this end on, which connects to the oversized large high pressure port i'm either gonna have to change that nipple out or change the fitting on the hose let's see what we're gonna do either one i'm gonna take this off or take the fitting off of that one okay so what we did is i hit it with a grinding wheel on my bench grinder and i cut it down now i need to peel that off get that fitting out of there all right, so it did come off. It went flying on the ground, but we're going to blow it out with compressed air and use that in the yellow hose. Hooked my yellow hose up to my 30 pounder. Hooked that fitting up to that, the hose to that on yellow. Yellow's strapped over here temporarily. I keep the level of oil, stop leak, whatever it's supposed to be. Where is it? Uh, right there. We'll get that going. Okay, so finally got it on there with a little screw clamp. I just need to thread the fitting in and then we'll put that on the high side. Okay, well, I made a mess. Lost some of my charge in the hole on uh, some of my oil because I hooked this one up first. We had about five PSI left in the system, which I did on purpose so I don't have to worry about air. I don't want air in the system and I'm not vacuuming it at this moment. Uh, so, have to hook up the propane, uh, the Freon end first. Make sure your hose is still full of oil. And I'm using screw clamps to cinch up the hose all the way, which is maybe working, maybe it ain't. There's still a little drippage. You gotta love it when you got drippage. Well, instead of using quarter, half of the bottle, I use three quarters. 
It's going to be an expensive experiment to some degree, but it's better than taking the dashboard apart. So that's what we're shooting for. All right, now, what we're going to do, my gauges say I still got 10 PSI in there. I'm going to see if I can push this in. I want to push it in before I charge it up the rest of the way. Well, I got 80 PSI I still showing on blue, even though I'm hooked to red, so it did blow that red stuff in there. Looks like red refrigerant oil. Whether or not it works, I don't know, but it's warranted uh, to work. Uh, I guess that's something. So I'm going to redo my hoses and put them up back properly so I can read my numbers and get the right charge on all this. Um, we are dealing with R134A, and I've done this car so many times, uh, I'm getting pretty good at it, unfortunately. It only lasts about 30 days. So we'll see if we get more than 30. Supposedly, if you have a small leak like that, it'll fix it. Oh yeah, well, I tried using a thicker uh, charge oil, 150. I put a, a 40 milliliters, a little over an ounce of, uh, one and a third ounce of 150 pag. I think it calls for 46 or 50. I, whatever I had handy, I used one time and don't remember looking it up again, but I think it's 46. So, uh, we're going to undo some of this and put it back like you would on a normal charge. Okay, I got the hoses connected back normal. Blue goes to the large vacuum port on the large aluminum or whatever tubing small red fittings are tight normal fittings are tight hose clamps are tight i was going to use this 134a small can but it's got a different you need the needle needle release to press down in there to release this valve and my hose set is not for that i do have a mini hose for that but of course it's got the wrong end on it too so decided to get my big can out i still got some left Next step, next step is clean up this mess, wipe off my tools, start up the motor. I may need some hot water for this to get it going. So we got a running high on high, max AC, full blower. We are uh, actually going pretty good. I normally have to use hot water to get this stuff to work, but not today maybe, I don't know. Our ambient's about 80 degrees, so I'll have to check the chart and see what we got. charge up this stuff I uh, look at the high side a lot too because you can't go higher than what it's called for or it'll it'll cut out on you or vent or uh, be hot and not cold so 175 is the highest it can be at 80 degrees on the high side low side is going to vary but high side is even more important in this case so what we've got here without hot water we're uh, 148 maybe whatever that is and I probably have to get some hot water going to get it going okay get the bucket got the hot water got plenty of freon left uh, to make this this last charge though I've gone through 30 pound here in a year which is ridiculous but I keep charging this thing up trying to, uh, used to last for three months now it lasts for one month uh, we are almost where we need to be. I need to double check the ambient. As you can see, hot water helps push that in there. And we turn this off and make sure everything's off. And then we get our true numbers. We're just under 40 and just under 175. Um, we are getting plenty of cold sweat back on the big line. Let me check the ambient. Okay, we dropped down, so we're gonna get some more in there. We can go as high as two and a quarter on the high side. It is about say 80 degrees, so let's go ahead and do that. Crank this open to on. And whoops, too much. I don't want to blow it up yet. Alright, let's get this thing up there. I want to get my charge at maximum because it does leak out. And I'm not optimistic about this stop leak. Um, it was okay when it was every 
30, uh, 90 days, but now we're down to 30, which is really kind of sucky. I mean, it's still cheaper to put in Freon, but you gotta do a lot. Here in North Texas, we're hot and humid, especially today, where we're real hot. Uh, where in the wintertime, you might need AC for because of a sunny, warm day. So, let's see what she's doing. back to the pressures it says I can't go more than 210 on a 80 degree day and we are right about there uh, sees it running uh, sitting at 200 Let me check this I can't I wasn't in here kick but it, yeah it is running so we are at 210 I think we're done I think we're done for today yeah, like I said, we don't get too much in there. It won't, won't be as cool as you'd like it to be. Anyway. I do not know if that's how you do it. But that's how we did it today. And I appreciate you bearing with me watching this. Uh, if you would uh, subscribe, I'd appreciate it. I hope I earned your subscription today. And also... If you connect, hit the bell, hit all, it'll alert you if I got some other redneck rigging modification hack that that I'd like to have, uh, like to share with you, actually. And I'll keep it, though, and I'll have it, but I got a bunch of stuff I've done over the years that I haven't had time to, to video, but we'll get to them eventually. Hopefully, uh, it's better to have too much and then not enough for the content. Anyway, God bless. Good night. Adios.